no? Okay, great. <laughs> um, this is uh, the big picture of the of the infrastructure um, on the public subnet. We are putting the monitoring and on, on the dashboard on each region, um, and then you can put as many private subnets as uh, you want. And we are, like I said uh, at the beginning, putting uh, some security groups on each uh, group of servers, so they allow a specific. Uh, uh, security group to communicate uh, each other. How it works, all the automation and, and, and scaling. As I said, I'm using uh, a bash script in order to um, orchestrate uh, all the, the creation. This is just an example. Um, we are putting here the IP subnet that we want on the, on let's say, east region. The name of the region, the IP subnet for the second one, then of course, needs to be different than the, than the other. Uh, the other region, the action that we, need, that we want to execute on the, let's say, stack. Action could be create, update, or delete. And the stack we have separated um, in, let's say, VPC, monitoring, dashboard, um, application one, application two, whatever. So um, for, as you can see here with a, a switch, we are just creating VPC, putting some kind of uh, variables that we need to define previous uh, to the creation. And then we are calling to some uh, AWS uh, CLI commands. So, uh, this could be executed from any place. No need to be like inside of your uh, um, subnet or, or, or have a, a Linux or, or Windows instance in Amazon. Um, the good thing is that, as you can see here, we are using only one file that can be used to uh, create both uh, uh, VPC, let's say, on, on, on different regions and just passing a different parameters to it. Uh, this is an example of cloud formation. Um, this is how uh, VPC is. Uh, uh, it's a it's a resource we call a resource in in, in cloud formation. A uh, VPC is uh, has some properties, like say like the Cedar block. That's a, a, a variable that we are defining when we are passing this to the from the bash to the cloud formation. And on the cloud formation, you can uh, define uh, user data for uh, the instances that you are creating. L in this example, I'm just uh, putting a, a, a comment to make an ad and, and just touching some, some specific file for, for doing the, the NAT. The well, as we have, I said, regions, different regions, we need to uh, look at them in just one single view. So this picture tried to uh, make an example of how distributed you can have all your, your systems and, and, and looks like they are in the same place. The cloud monitoring architecture is uh, basically putting on different VPC on different regions, and then we are um, updating our files, just uploading to a, a, a centralized location, let's say uh, S3, for example. So we put in the, in the Nagios servers uh, a cron job There is downloading and uploading um, data based on, on the information that it has on the, on the um, uh, configuration directories. For example, you, you can just modify one host group here, but I mean, you're modifying here and will be replicated to all your Anagios instance that you have and the, with this kind of architecture. Um, this could be as heterogeneous as you want because probably in this region you don't have uh, a lot of uh, services, but here you have a lot. So it doesn't matter. 
Uh, in fact, you can have many Nagios, or let's say Tsinga or whatever, um, on on this VPC based on on the on the on your needs, and uh, they are all going to be uh, sharing the same uh, services, contacts, scripts, or or host groups. Tools that are we are using for this is basically live status in order to um, uh, put data back to to um, through. Um, if you know what it is, live status is uh, just a, a, a broker. And uh, the good thing is you can just send and, and uh, receive uh, comments from w with that. The other thing that we are using it's a, a REST loss API. Um, we install that on the Nagios uh, servers, and with that we can just uh, create or, or delete the host that we are uh, uh, well creating or, or, or deleting. Um, the good thing are both open open source, so um, you can just modify as you want. The other thing is iWatch. iWatch is an um, uh, file change notification system. So what it does is you can configure a specific uh, command once the uh, file system that you are monitoring is being changed. So as I said before, we are putting a file in a S3, then with a cron job we are downloading our files to Nagios, and well, you need to reload Nagios. No, you don't. You just need to configure iWatch to see, let's say, user local Nagios etc. And every file that is modified there, iWatch will reload um, uh, Nagios. Good thing is can watch directory recursively. So if you put just uh, etc from the configuration, all things that you have below that directory and it's modified will reload Nagios. Um, could be used for other, for other things. I just use for for this, and also we are using Web Inject in order to um, uh, create some user cases in order to um, uh, provide, let's say, real user interface to 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 our test. Um, Web Inject with, with Web Inject, what you can do is create the test case file. And then you can have several cases for a specific thing. For example, let's uh, log into an application, then click on an, a specific, uh, 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 go to a specific link, retrieve some kind of, uh, like, let's say, OAuth, and then with that OAuth that we are uh, getting, go and, and execute something on an, an API. So this is basically the integration that we're doing, putting an MCLI broker, REST loss, all the plugins that it comes with, with Nagios, WebInject, and, and iWatch. Uh, MCLI for uh, output data, REST loss for adding and removing host, the WebInject for application monitoring, and iWatch for, for files changes. In in Amazon Web Services, you have the CloudFormation, and CloudFormation you can just add user data. User data could be for Linux and also for Windows. You can write some kind of PowerShell scripts. Um, and uh, what we're doing is, whenever we have a host that is um, being added to our system, we're using curl, a curl uh, line, and we're sending a post call to Nagios through REST loss when the server is uh, starting. And we send a delete action with curl tool when the instance is shutting down. Also, we put the host type. So basically, with that, we are defining what kind of host we are adding to our system. And with user data, also, you can install tools, let's say, like SNMP or NRPE or wherever that you want. For example, on the Windows systems, we install um, NRPE, well, 
NS client. And um, we configure SNMP, uh, adding the right um, community name. Uh, we disable the firewall or things like that. This is like uh, the addition of, of the host. Um, what we're doing is adding to RC local uh, this line there is in in, uh, in bash and sending a file that is being down, downloaded previously on the um, uh, user data. You, we download a host monitor of let's say common file for all our servers, and then we are passing um, uh, the instance IP, the monitoring instance IP that we are using at that time. And then, well, calling the, the REST loss API. It's like a JSON uh, based. So, what we do is replace, we replace the host name and the community here in order to configure uh, all our uh, servers. For the delete, what you do is put a bash script on uh, uh, run level zero and we execute like a delete sending the uh, host name that we replaced previously and to the monit instance IP. So every time the host is going down in a init zero uh, uh, comment, we are uh, removing our host from the um, monitoring system. So basically that's the, the idea. I mean, just having a, a monitoring system, when you're adding nodes, you're seeing, and when you're removing nodes, there is node there. So for adding and, and removing host, uh, the iWatch sync and, and Nagios, uh, host file is uh, uploaded or removed in a central repository. So when you're adding a node, the node is uh, added to the Nagios and then uploaded to the central repository. For new services, it's like the same, uh, just uh, putting a, a new service on the S3 uh, backup um, bucket and uh, then it's going to be shared across all your, your, your Nagios. And same thing for, for host groups or, or service groups. Basically, the host groups are uh, uh, a group of, of servers or hosts, and you can just uh, define them on, on user data with the um, with the um, CloudFormation script, just replacing some variables. So every time that you create a node, you can put as many host groups as you want, creating uh, parents or, or, or childs for it. And well, this is uh, basically the, the idea. So you can define a host and add your host groups as you want. So this could be like a, a a nice view. So we have, let's say, a bastion servers or gateway servers, and you can see here 249. And also, as this is a bastion, but it's a Linux server, so you have a 249 also here. And then we have, let's say, Hadoop servers or uh, Apache web servers. And as you can see, there are different amount of services for for uh, the nodes because it depends if they are uh, another, if they have another host groups with services associated with. This is how you can associate services on, on the host groups. Um, uh, let's say that I want that all Linux servers can uh, have SSH, but I don't want the Windows ones. So on the, on the um, Windows, I will configure ping and also for Linux servers. Um, in this example, you have the Linux CPU only for Linux servers and Linux memory also for, for Linux servers. The main map or big map could be like this. Um, so you have your uh, squares here 
unlike the host groups, and these are the services associated with, and you have all these servers that belongs to this host group. But as you can see, let's say here, this node belongs to this host group and to this one. So this host will have all these services and also this one. Okay, um, with Throog, we are collecting our data and uh, using the panorama view in two big uh, uh, monitors that we have, like, I don't know, like 16 inch, something like that. Um, so we have uh, two tabs, one is for production and one is for pre-production, and we are just rotating every um, uh, 30 seconds. Here you can configure uh, or filter, let's say, from uh, different sites. So you can uh, just have a, a all services on pre-production, and you can filter uh, only critical and, let's say, critical and warning or, or unknown. So uh, basically, you can see only problems here. Then you have the mind map. Um, with all the services and the and the host and where where the problem is, and this is how we are um, filtering our results. And well, here you can see all your uh, backends that you have configured and the status of of it of each. Oh, same thing for uh, a reporting. We are creating reporting. Um, for different uh, managers um, and for different groups. We're sending them by email, every uh, uh, some schedule that we have configured there. And we are putting uh, a specific application here as a host groups in order to send only the information that they want. Um, well, this is the, the, the extended com uh, visualization of your uh, Nagios. And here, this is how we are filtering, let's say, on different regions. I don't know if you can read, it's barely. Um, here we have one uh, region, and here we have the other region. So we are putting uh, both, and then we're filtering for, for, for this application in particular. The, uh, this is some graphics of uh, SLA reporting. Uh, as, as Ben showed yesterday, uh, you can get uh, uh, an SLA overview. You can see a specific host, and you can get this by um, uh, a public URL, or you can get it by um, uh, in a PDF in by mail. Okay. With the bash that I executed this morning, was created. Two isolated networks on uh, United States, because I choose those two regions, one on east in uh, Virginia and west in North California. Um, each one with a public subnet and a NAT instance for uh, outgoing traffic, an IPsec tunnel configured between zones to communicate securely and encrypted. Two independent monitoring systems, one Nagios on each with uh, the uh, MCLIVE status and uh, two dashboards also on the public subnet. Uh, and this is just one single view of both regions. Um, everything was scripted on the cloud formation and the user data. So um, no need to do any manual work. And also the instances that were created were added automatically to the monitoring system. Um, I will show you uh, some code of, of the of this. Let's say um, okay. Let me check. I will go a little bit faster at the beginning. Um, okay, this is how we uh, how we create the VPC. Um, as I said, just basically using a single file for both, just defining what's our uh, first region and what's the second one. Um, 
uh, then with some bash uh, replacing, we are just putting the IP that, uh, that I want for, for the NAT. And uh, delete is very simple. It's just uh, 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 an API call for, for delete. For the monitoring, we are using, uh, we need to know the VPC ID because they are dependent um, for each one. Um, we need to define which the, the public subnet that the instance is going to be there. Uh, the key name that we are going to use for, uh, for logging to those instances and the, let's say, the size of the machine. Instance host type is basically the host groups where I will put in this instance. Um, this is how you call to the monitoring, um, uh, how to create the monitoring on, on both sides. And uh, then what I'm doing is just um, uh, getting from from uh, AWS the Nagios URL. The same thing is with uh, Throop. Um, and here is the the NAT, how we are creating the NAT and how we are attaching uh, the NAT the the network interface to the NAT. Um, and basically, that's all on the on the bash. The VPC template, you need to define some parameters. Let's say, like the uh, what are you going to uh, what's going to be your uh, NAT uh, IP, the domain name, and the on the subnet where you're going to see uh, all these. Then you need to um, create your resources. Let's say uh, what kind of uh, DHCP options you're gonna have. Uh, you need to associate uh, that to the VPC, then create a public subnet, uh, ask for an elastic IP for communicate between regions. Then you're creating the network interface, the internet gateway, um, the public road, and well, all your uh, security groups here for uh, for communicate between between zones. The NAT VPN template, basically, I will not show the, the same thing than, than before, but this is where it starts the user data. You are creating a bash uh, file that is, being, uh, that is going to be executed on the first uh, time that the machine is booting. Um, just modifying some, some files here, uh, reloading the... the I, Amazon has some kind of weird things, so every time that uh, the network interface is detached to an instance and attached it again, you need to reload the IPsec uh, service. So basically what I put here is every time that I get uh, uh, an, an IFAP local, I'm reloading the, the, the IPsec uh, service. And this is basically how to uh, configure, in our case, uh, the, the IPsec. Just putting what is the IP of the we call left side and right side. Um, what is the uh, elastic IP that we have on left and 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 right? And then we are putting a a, a VPN key that you can pass with uh, through the the Bash script to this uh, CloudFormation script. Then you just change config IPsec on service IPsec start and that's it. Um, same thing with uh, instance two that we are creating and the attachment for for the network interface and the association with the external IP. And that's all. For the monitoring, it's almost the same. Uh, just creating things specifically for for Nagios. Um, installing all the packages that we need, creating some folders, um, getting some uh, default files that we have on the on the S3, um, installing all the uh, PNAG, uh, Nagios 3.5, and compressing, uh, configuring, making the install. Um, some plugins that we are using for, let's say, MongoDB, the REST loss, uh, 
What else? Uh, all the scripts that we have on a libexec uh, location, and then creating the, here you, you can see we create the, the cron tab line for syncing our uh, file system with our centralized location. Um, installing the live status, configuring it, and just doing some restart here. And creating the same lines that i shown before for the uh, uh, addition of, the, of this node to itself. Um, and that's basically the, the, the monitoring template. Dashboard template is the same, but with Truk. And we're also installing Nagios on the same machine and configured it. Um, that's basically the, the, the cloud formation. Okay, uh, live demo would be like, let's say this, ouch. Uh, when this uh, script finish, you get a, a two files, uh, monit out and dashboard out. I will show just the uh, dashboard. Um, so you have a Nagvis on east, a Thruk on east, Nagvis on west, and Thruk on west. Um, let's say, let me check the whole URL. Just one second. If you have questions, just shoot it. So this is what you get on at the end. Hey, hello. <laughs> and now I lost the URL. Great. Thank you. So you receive uh, two URLs. Uh, let's say this is east, because you have east one here. And uh, you have your two Nagios configured automatically. And you have your services created by um, automatically also because of the host groups and services association. And uh, basically, if I uh, remove one of these, you will now see like uh, two hosts only with 14. Um, uh, services attached to it, and this is the other through that we have on West, and with uh, the backends are just uh, this one, the Nagios, let's say one, and the Nagios two. As you can see here, the um, subnets are different, so they are sitting on different places. So, QS. Uh, no. That was fast. <laughs> yes, for for the scaling, we are using. Um, the, the auto scaling features that uh, Amazon CLI uh, provides. Um, in this case, what I showed you was a, a big URL, but that is an ELB with a, 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 an instance that is attached to that ELB. But if you kill that instance, it's going to be recreated automatically yeah. with the same user data. So you're not going to lose anything. So whenever the Nagios host is being uh, uh, created, it will download all your files from S3, including your latest backup that was like a minute ago. I was thinking the same, like if you don't have a cloud or stuff, yeah, you could try. If you're not, yeah, if you're not in, in Amazon, it's fine because what you can do is just create, a, a, let's say, a, a, an instance with some specific code on it. 
in a bash script, that's what I'm writing in the, in the user data, you put in the same bash script on some rc.local, and then when the machine is booting, you're gonna have the same result. Yeah, I was also thinking of Puppet and stuff, so. Yeah, we are working on migrate all of these to mm. Puppet or okay. Chef. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Okay. It seems like you're monitoring what actually is running but do you have any monitoring for what should be running? Because now if a machine is shut down accidentally, uh -huh. it will still be okay, right? Well, you have some sort of monitoring for those scenarios? You mean if, let's say by mistake? Yeah, someone goes in and is gonna shut down one machine and accidentally kills four of them or something. Then they would be removed from the monitoring and everything will be looking nice on your yes, screen. Yes, because right? as we run with, uh, um, cloud scaling, you have like a main instances that should be running. So let's say you have a, an auto scaling group in Amazon and you, you put like two main instances on it. So if you kill one, another will be created automatically okay. and you will still have two. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea of uh, not worrying about your instances. You need to be worried about that your SLA is what you said that should be, let's say four nines. In, if you kill whole instances in one region, no matter, because DNS failover will move your traffic to the other region until the, let's say, active one recover. Okay, I just put all this uh, uh, information in the, in the GitHub, so you can download, play, and whatever. And I just translated this from Google, so I hope it's fine. <laughs> so, um, uh, if you have any questions and uh, you want me to help you to, uh, do something, just this is my email address so you can contact me. Free of charge. First session. <laughs> okay? Thank you very much for uh, being here.